guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna do a quick wrap-up video. I have a lot of books from my last wrap-up video, so this video might be a little bit long, so you might wanna get a little snack, a little drink, something to tide you over while you watch this, but I will try not to get too deep into every single book. Um, I have talked about some of these books actually in like favorite books of the year videos and stuff like that, so when I do talk about those books, I will try to talk about them a little bit more quickly. Um, but I have a lot of books to share, and I also have a lot of graphic novels. I went to the library recently and I picked up a bunch of graphic novels, so those are going to be kind of fun to talk about as well. But I have really good news, you guys. I have started this year off super super strong with the books I've been picking out and last year I only had one gold star book and it was um, the Jeanette McCurdy book I'm glad my mom died and I didn't read that until like later in the year but it's January and I already have a gold star read like I'm really happy about that because last year was not a gold star reading year for me so hopefully this isn't gonna be my only one but I'm really excited to talk about it with you guys so we're gonna start off with some of the books that I read last year that I haven't talked about in a wrap-up video yet and then I'll talk about the books that I've read so far this year so the first two books actually I haven't talked about in a wrap-up yet but I did talk about them in a favorite books of the year video and in not like my biggest disappointment book video of the year. That is definitely not what it's called. The first one is The American Roommate Experiment. This one I talked about in my most disappointing reads. This was a two-star read. This book actually made me really, really feel like there was something wrong with me. Like, do you ever read one of your favorite, like a book in your favorite genre and you hate it and you're just like, do I even like romance anymore? Like, that was so underwhelming. I feel absolutely nothing and I'm like sad about it. That is exactly how I felt with this book. And this was one of those books where, like, as much as I love The Spanish Love Deception, this book made me really hesitant to read any more Elena Armas books. This one disappointed me so much, and it showed me, like, just a few things about her writing style that just don't mesh well with me. I think I just got really, really lucky with The Spanish Love Deception. I felt like there was no chemistry between them. The main character was just so cringy and hard to read, and there was just something about it. And usually I love Friends to Lovers. I love it, but in my review I talked about how new Friends to Lovers is so hard to do because I feel like it's so unrealistic. Like, if you're a person that really wants to meet, uh, like, a partner, right? You want to get married, you want to have kids, like, you're in that age range where you're really wanting to, like, meet your husband and you meet somebody, right, at that age range and he's super, super hot and you think he is the most attractive guy and that guy thinks that you're super attractive and that he's like really like, he just is really attracted to you. And you guys get along flawlessly, but for some reason you make up some weird ass excuse as to why you can't date and you just don't date, but you guys are just like really good friends and like super attracted to each other. No, that's stupid. I think about me in my 20s and if I met a guy that was so hot, that was super attracted to me, and we had so much, like, we just had so much fun together and we got along so well, like, I would want to date that guy so bad. Like, I would be literally trying everything that I could do to, like, snag that man. I wouldn't be making up excuses as to why I couldn't date him. Like, that's stupid. I'm sorry. I just don't believe it. <laughs> Next up is Starfish. This was a five-star read. I love this. If you really are into like coming-of-age stories and stories with really good growth in the main character, you have to read this. Loved it so much. It deals with narcissistic parents. It deals with a girl that has a lot of self-esteem issues and kind of finding her way in life, finding her independence, and going out there and like kind of like tackling her anxieties and trying to get over a lot of her anxieties and it's such a good story. I feel like the character and the author maybe had a lot in common and that's why it was so well written and just really realistic. So highly recommend this if you're looking for like a really quick read that has like a really good punch and a really good impact. Love this. Five stars. Okay, so the next book that I read was a graphic novel. This is Feelings, A Story in the Seasons. I think I gave this like three stars. This is just a weird kind of funny little graphic novel. It was okay, but it wasn't anything like mind-blowing. It's just kind of the relatable aspects of life and kind of the things that we go through when like the seasons change and like the feelings that we get when the seasons change, like how hopeful we get in the summer and kind of how we hibernate in the winter and kind of just the feelings that we feel and the thoughts that we have with the changing of the seasons, but it's also kind of takes place just in the specific person's life, so you're kind of getting their story. 
it was okay. It wasn't the best thing ever. I feel like it was a very, very simplified version of that idea, and I kind of like the idea. I just wish it was just a little bit more explored, and it wasn't quite so simplified. So three stars, wasn't the best, wasn't the worst, but it was okay. Next graphic novel that I read was A Fire Story, and this is by Brian Thighs. This was so good, you guys. So this is about a man, and the writer of this actually um, lost his house in a huge California fire. And he was a uh, graphic novel cartoonist person. And so when the fires started happening, he instantly started drawing and writing about his experience being part of these fires and losing his house and literally losing everything he has ever owned. And this is just his experience and his wife's experience in that process of losing your home and then like having to rebuild your life with like nothing you've ever owned and it was such a good and interesting story like living in a state where there's a lot of like wildfires I've always wondered what it would be like to lose literally everything. I feel like he encompasses that perfectly and because this is a graphic novel I just feel like it was easy to read and I loved it. I thought it was so good. Um, I gave this five stars. I thought it was fantastic and I think that this was like a webcomic and it got a ton of attention as a webcomic so they, he just decided to publish it. So highly recommend this. So the next book that I read was an audiobook and I had been told to read this after I read The Push which The Push is one of my favorite books of all time. Love that book. And somebody told me to read We Need to Talk About Kevin. And this has been um, recommended to me multiple times and it really got me interested because it's basically about a fictional family and this woman really decides one day that she wants to have a child. Like her and her husband are kind of like unsure but then one day they feel like they decided they want to have a child. Like they wanted that purpose in life. So they get pregnant and they have this little boy named Kevin. And Kevin is born with um, antisocial personality disorder, basically. He's um, a psychopath from birth and they notice a lot of these weird things that he does like all throughout his life and it's this very, 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 very strong, deep dive into the psyche of this child. And then in high school he actually commits a school shooting and it's kind of in the mother's voice and what she's doing is she's writing letters to her husband and she's kind of like telling the stories from her perspective to her husband and so it's really interesting in that regard as well. This book was like really impactful, really hard hitting. If you love psychology and you love like trying to understand the psyche of just different types of people, then I think that you will really, really like this. The only downside that I had with this book, like there's no flippin' way I probably would have read this physically. This women's writing is so pretentious and so over the top, like it almost was funny. Like I kind of feel like, you know when you can tell that somebody uses a thesaurus and they use it like a lot? Like I remember in my college years I was really really guilty of doing this sometimes where you just pull out a thesaurus and you start changing like every word because you want to sound really smart. That's kind of I feel like what this author did and it got really tiring really fast and really noticeable really fast and this book is really really long so you kind of feel like she just went through and just started changing a bunch of words just to make her book sound a little bit more profound. And I didn't really like that. It was really kind of a sludge to get through and I kind of feel like if I was reading it physically it would be like 10 times worse. Um, and I also kind of felt like it was a little weird. Like if this was a memoir, let's say, or not a memoir, but like a story about like a true crime thing. Like you're, there's a journalist and they're really diving deep into this serial killer or whatever. Like we've read books like that where it's more journalistic. Um, it makes more sense to dive this deep into their psyche. But because this character was fictional, I kind of feel like it was pointless to dive so deep. Like I almost felt like it was a little bit redundant. Like she could make this character any way that she wanted. And so they were diving so deep into this fictional character and I'm like, but this character isn't real. So why are we like analyzing him so heavily? It just felt like it wasn't really necessary because he wasn't real. Does that make sense? And I sort of feel like it was a little bit stereotypical in that way because we were analyzing him so deeply. It almost came across as like a caricature. Like how would a um, psychopathic kid act and then she created that kid and then we just analyzed the heck out of it. You know what I mean? This story would have been more interesting if we focused on like the plot more than analyzing a fake 
person that doesn't actually really exist in real life. Does that make sense? So I think I gave this book four stars, um, or maybe I gave it three stars. I honestly can't remember, but it was okay. It wasn't my favorite book of all time. I still much prefer The Push. I think The Push did it much better, and this was just okay. So the next book that I read was The Silent Patient by uh, Alex Michaelides. This is obviously a really popular book, and I talked about how um, this was in my top 10 favorite books of the year, and I read this while I wrapped presents because I have to listen to a psychological thriller while I wrap presents every year. This is my third year doing it, and this was the book that I picked, and I really, really, really liked this. Um, I feel like there were some aspects of this book where I was like, is that really how it works in the real world? Like, I kind of felt like you could tell that Alex Michaelides isn't in the psychological field or he doesn't practice it as an actual doctor, like he didn't know actual rules and boundaries and it kind of was a little distracting sometimes because I think you can really tell when you read an author that actually has worked in the industry versus an author that hasn't, especially when it comes to psychological thrillers. That being said though, I could kind of suspend my disbelief there and I really really liked this book. I kind of tried to predict it and I got a little bit right, but it was still a really interesting ending and I really thought the ending was great. I wouldn't say it was the best twist that I've ever experienced while reading, but it was still really satisfying and I really liked it. So if you're looking for a fun audiobook to listen to maybe while you're cleaning or while you're doing some big chore that you have to do, highly recommend this one. I thought it was really good. One of the last books that I read um, last year was the second book in Between Wrath and Mercy trilogy. I think it's Between Ma Wrath and Mercy trilogy. And Between Wrath and Mercy was actually one of my favorite books of last year. Very Sarah J Mass vibes. It has like that really strong like fantasy plot line while also having like a really heavy romance which like Sarah J Mass is known for and this has very much that vibe. Um, it also has dragons in it. It has found family in it. Even though I gave the first book five stars, I gave this book two stars. <laughs> And the sucky thing about this is I actually liked this a little bit at first. I was really into it. I was really into the characters. This is the book that I fell in love with Dewalt in, which I talked about as one of my favorite characters of the year in my wrap up or whatever. Dewalt is one of my favorite characters. I love him. He's so interesting. I wouldn't say he's a perfect character. Like he's does do some things wrong here and there. He's not like perfectly nice all the time or anything. But he's an interesting character to read about and this was the book that I actually really started liking him in. But I have to say I did not like this book and it just got painfully boring. Painfully boring. I almost feel like there's too many characters, too many perspectives that we're reading about, too many storylines going on to where nothing is moving forward because we have to catch up with each storyline constantly and when you're trying to keep up with so many storylines and so many perspectives, the plot doesn't actually really move forward very fast because you're always trying to like keep up with every single storyline. And so I feel like this book struggled with pacing and I can tell you that by like the three quarter mark I was like I can't do this anymore. Like please get to the point already. Like I can't do this anymore. And I hated Rainier and Emmeline in this book. Love them in the first book, which is why I gave them best couple, because they were the best in the first book. This book though, oh my god, I, ugh, and don't get me wrong, I get when authors try to do this thing where they want to show characters going through mental health issues realistically, right? Obviously mental health issues aren't hard to get, or aren't easy to get through. And I feel like Sarah J Mass did it great with Nesta. For some reason it worked. It did not work here. She tried to make it so one of the characters is going through a really hard time like with PTSD but it was in a way where you're like okay I get that this is probably how it is in real life but like I don't want to read about it. Like this is really boring, it's really irritating and like I said could happen in real life this way but like you don't want to read sometimes things in the exact same way that they would happen in real life because it's just boring, like it's not interesting. And I feel like that's what she fell into with this was trying to make it too realistic to where you're just like, okay, like I'm done. Can we just like get them to a place where they're kind of healthy again so we can kind of like move on with the story? You know what I mean? So I gave this two stars. I was so unhappy with it and I'm so sad about that because the first book was so good. I don't even know if I'm going to read the, the next book, if I'm being honest. We'll see. So those were all the books that I read last year that I never got to wrap up. So now we're going to start with this year. So the first book that I read this year was The Pisces by Melissa Broder. And that was this book here. This book was so freaking weird. 
okay? Like, let me just say that going into this, like, I gave this book five stars, but if you're not prepared for the weirdness of this book, and just the um, honesty, and just like the realness of this book, and that like, you know when a character has like an inner monologue, it's like written very inner monologue-ish, where you're basically hearing every single thought that the main character is having, and when a character is written that way by the right author, the character isn't really all that likable, but you realize though that like if anybody had their inner monologue listened to all the time, nobody would be likable, like everyone would be kind of weird. That's kind of how I feel like this book is. It's kind of like you have to know that like, like this character's inner monologue and inner thoughts, like you're hearing everything. And so she is going to be a little bit unlikable. She wrote this book purposely to kind of be a little bit jarring at times to make you like kind of cringe in your seat a little bit and just kind of be like, okay, that was a weird thing to put in this book, but okay. Like, she did it on purpose. She really, really, really wanted to make this character as real as she possibly could, and I think she was successful at it. This book is basically about a girl who has a really, really dysfunctional attachment style. She has fearful avoidant attachment style, and I have learned quite a bit about attachment styles, and I can kind of relate to this character in a way. If you do have any sort of avoidant attachment style, then you will really be able to relate to this character. Basically, this character really, really wants to be in a relationship. She is obsessed with love, obsessed with romance. But every single time she gets into a relationship, she just like pulls away. She's like, uh-uh, no, I can't do it. So what ends up happening is she finds this merman. And she meets this merman and they start kind of falling in love. And it's so interesting because it's weird and it's very surreal. Like a lot of the stuff in this book, you're like, that could never happen. You have to like suspend your disbelief with surrealism. You know what I mean? There was definitely parts where I was just like, I think, okay, how I think she was successful with this is she really wanted to explore attachment styles without really realizing it. I don't know if Melissa Broder knows a lot about attachment styles, but that was kind of what she ended up doing with this in a really successful way. And the reason why she fell in love with this mermaid had so much to do with her attachment style and it kind of went into the background of sirens and why sirens do what they do because if you don't know like the background of sirens they sing and they lure fishermen into the ocean to kill them but this kind of goes into why and this kind of goes into like the reasonings between why they do it and it kind of again goes into the attachment style thing and it was super super interesting so if you like attachment styles or you like kind of understanding human behavior because I think that that's kind of why I like psychology as well as well is because I really like kind of the intricacies of human behavior and it's also why I like like the Enneagram because I think it all kind of connects in this weird way and I think that she did a really good job with that in this book I gave this book five stars, but this book has a really low rating, but I think she was successful at it in this really weird way. Like, I feel like this book is kind of genius, but it's freaking weird. So just go into it knowing that. Like, I was telling Travis some of the things in this book, and he was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, that is the weirdest thing. Like, why would you write that? And I'm like, if you kind of like things like Bunny, I feel like this is very similar to Bunny in a lot of ways, just a bit more surreal. And... It kind of has that same allegorical feel to it where you kind of have to analyze it and this was one of those books where I thought about it for like weeks after I read it. So five stars. So the next book that I read was uh, The Girl from the Other Side, this book here, and I have seen this book for years and I've wanted to read this book for years. I've seen this on Book Outlet for so many years and every single time I always want to um, buy it because it always looked so cute to me. But my niece actually owns this because she's huge into like graphic novels. She's the one that let me read her Heartstopper graphic novels. And she had this and I was like, oh my god, I need to borrow that. So she let me borrow it. This book is as cute as I thought it was going to be and I want to read all of them. So this is about a little girl right here who gets lost in the forest. And this guy here is like this evil, like, I don't know what you call it, like a monster. And in this story, there's this town, and they built like this fence around their town because they don't want these evil monsters to get into their town. Because if you touch one of these monsters, then you turn into one of these monsters. So they're trying to keep these monsters out of the town. So this girl actually gets dropped off outside of the fence, and this guy finds her, and he is has decided to protect her and kind of take her in as his own, but he's not allowed to touch her. So this is kind of like their story, and it's really cute, 
and it's adorable and I'm so interested in reading all of these. So the next book that I picked up was Radium Girls. This was on my top 10 list of books that I want to read in 2023 and this was the first book that I read off of that list and this was just as good as I thought it was going to be. This was so so interesting. Um, I gave this four stars and the only reason I gave it four stars is because I feel like parts of it just wasn't really my taste. If you really like like court cases and you really like legal stuff. I think you'll really like this because a lot of this book was the Radium Girls in court and kind of like how their court case progressed and all that kind of thing and as interesting as it was I wouldn't say it's the most interesting thing to me but this is about the Radium Girls. The Radium Girls were um, lived in the 1920s and the radium plants started popping up and it was like the job to have if you were a girl in the 1920s and you lived in these towns like and basically what they did is they painted the clock dials and what they would do is they would paint and then they'd lick the tip of their brush to get them pointy and then they'd paint the radium but they didn't know that radium was radioactive and it was gonna like completely destroy their lives and kill them and but everybody wanted these jobs because they paid really really well and the girls that had these jobs were like the popular girls of the town. They glowed as they walked down the street, you know, and after about five to ten years, all of these girls started getting really horrible physical damage to their bodies and they all started dying. They got, you know, tumors and their jaws were falling off and their teeth were rotting out and just really, really bad things were happening. So all of these women decided to sue the radium plants, but the radium plants were like, uh-uh. Like, it's not our fault. It's not our fault. It's not our fault. And they did everything that they possibly could to not help these girls. And the trials went on forever. And no matter how long these trials went on, like, they couldn't prove that the radium is what did, these, did this to these girls. And it was so obvious. Like, the whole time you're like, obviously. It's an amazing book if you like history. It's an amazing book if you just like weird medical conditions. It's great if you love, you know, like I said, court cases and stuff like that. This is a great one. So now for my five star read or my gold star read. I freaking love this book so much. Oh my gosh. This had everything that I want in like a romance novel. Everything. It was perfect. The main love interest is like Cassian level status for me, which if you guys know, Cassian is like my number one. This man is better than freaking, what's his name? Aaron Blackford. He is like top tier love interest, okay? Brennan from It Happened One Summer and him, they're fighting for that number like two spot. Like I don't know which book I liked better, this or It Happened One Summer. I don't know. I'd have to reread It Happened One Summer, but you guys know that's one of my favorite romances ever. This is competing. So it is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This book is so cute and this book actually made me realize that I honestly, I can do hate to love. I can do enemies to lovers. It's really fun sometimes to read enemies to lovers. Like it's a fun trope, but it's not my favorite. It's just not my favorite. Like I feel like so many books revolve around hate to love or enemies to lovers that like it's so played out that when you read something that isn't enemies to lovers, it feels so refreshing. And this was not enemies to lovers. A lot of people say this is insta love, but this is not insta love. Okay. This is regular love. But I feel like a lot of people, when they read anything other than like enemies to lovers, they peg it as insta love. I think insta love isn't actually a trope. What I think insta love is, is regular love just written extremely poorly. And this is just how a regular relationship evolves. And it was so cute and it was so beautiful. And like Daniel Grant was like the best character, literally the exact type of love interest every woman wants. Like this guy right here is what every woman wants. This needs to be read in the bromance book club. Like if every guy was like, oh, this is what a girl wants, then the problems would be solved. This is about basically a girl that is driving through this tiny little town and she like flies into a ditch in her car and Daniel, the love interest, pulls her out of the ditch. And she is from a big city. She's this really, 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 really successful doctor. And she is like, required to stay at this hospital in Minneapolis because of her family lineage. And she's really, really hungry after all of this. So she goes to the bar and she sees the guy that pulled her out of the ditch at the bar. And then they start talking at the bar and she decides to like go to his house and they end up hooking up or whatever. And it's really cute because this story is very much like how a real relationship would evolve. Like 
you like somebody and then you like hang out again and you like them more and then you hang out again and you like them more and you just really keep liking this person. And this relationship just evolves so beautifully but they just can't be together because of their circumstances and it's really really difficult to figure out how they're going to be together and everything just gets in the way and it's so sad. I'm telling you guys, I teared up in this. I literally teared up in this and that never happens, especially in romances. I don't recall a single romance in my entire reading career where I've cried in it or like teared up. This I did. Like there was one part where it was so heartbreaking. I was so sad about their situation. Like my eyes were tearing up because they were so in love with each other and it was so sad. You guys, like this is the exact type of romance that you want to read. Like when I tell you I want more romances like this that aren't enemies to lovers or hate to love that are just very like just sweet with like really good love interests. Like I love a golden retriever love interest. Love them. Like a lot of the books I talk about when I love a romance, the love interest is always a golden retriever love interest. They just love so deeply and care so deeply and they don't have that like asshole side to them. Like I don't like the asshole side and I feel like so many hate to love or enemies to lovers um, romance books there's always a little bit of asshole in the guy and it's just it's fun sometimes to read and I can read it sometimes and I can like it, but I like a golden retriever. I like a happy-go-lucky, like really lovable man that just is good. It kind of talks about like abuse. There's a lot of talk about abuse, a lot of abusive relationships in this and like the importance of getting out of abusive relationships, whether it be um, having um, parents that are emotionally and mentally abusive, having physically abusive partners, having, you know, emotionally abusive partners, and like the importance of finding a relationship that isn't abusive, that is just genuinely good, and when you find it, to like not let it go, you know? And I think that this book is just, it reminds you of how amazing love is, and like how lucky we are as humans to have love and just how amazing it is and to never lose hope that you can find love like this. Like it just makes you happy that love exists, you know? Like I'm a romantic, I love love and I'm never going to be one of those people that like gets bitter about love because I think love is a beautiful, beautiful thing and this book reminds you of how amazing love can be when you find it with the right person. So love it. That is it you guys. Sorry this video was so long. I know this video was super super long but I had a lot of books to talk about so hopefully you enjoyed this and I will see you guys in my next video. Not really sure what it's gonna be yet but I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.